Welcome back to Half the Battle. I'm your host as always, Daniel Levy, your co-host Shaq. We're going to be recapping UFC Singapore. Leon Edwards just defeated Cowboy Cerrone and Shaq. Uh, we said earlier on the preview show that if Leon wants to prove he's a top five guy, not only does he have to beat Cowboy Cerrone, he has to go out there and smoke him. And uh, he didn't smoke him at all, actually. He made it super close. He coasted uh, a lot in that fight, but he got the victory. He's officially a top ten guy. But were you impressed with Leon's performance that night? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you got to get the win no matter by any means. And, you know, Leon did his job at the end of the day. And I think uh, he's making good career decisions. He made a right call of calling Jorge out. That's a favorable uh, matchup. It's a nice split decision to win there. Exactly. You know, you just got to make it to the scorecards with Jorge. But uh, I think he's doing things the right way. His performance, I mean, uh, it was okay. But I really wasn't that impressed. Do I think he's a top five guy? No. I think he might be a top seven, eight, nine guy. You know what I'm saying? Saying, but uh, I think uh, he's gonna. He's got a. He made a nice decision calling out Jorge, and uh, but I think uh, ultimately when you know when he gets up back up to the uh, top five with the Colbys, the Tills, the Kamars, and don't put him in there with Till anytime <laughs> soon. Is all I gotta say. <laughs> The Pons and Ebios, you know what I'm saying? That could be his next fight, to be honest. So, you know, um, we'll see what he's made of. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as Cowboy Cerrone is concerned, I mean, you know, the the old dog still got some fight in him. It's just he can't really pull the trigger how he used to. I think two years ago he actually would have won this fight. But now it's like he wanted to go for those combos he threw in the Rick Story fight, but he just simply couldn't. And he was still able to land some takedowns. I mean, my boy Cowboy Cerrone won uh, two of the rounds on all three judges' scorecards. So, you know, he still showed that uh, you still got to be elite to get a win over a guy like Cowboy Cerrone. But now he has lost four of his last five. And I, I think with a guy like Cowboy Cerrone, we're so used to him winning so many of his fights. I mean, you look at that record. There's so much green in there. Now he's lost four of his last five. But he hasn't, uh, even though he did get starched against Till and uh, Jorge, I-, I still think he has a little bit of life left in him, man. I don't know if there's a title run. I'm not going to go that far. But I-, I still think he can give some guys yeah, problems at 170. Sure. I think, you know, just put him in fun, entertaining matchups from now on. You know what I'm saying? Put him... Put him in there with uh, another aging guy. It sucks that him and Condit are teammates. but Oh, yeah, because you know for a fact Brandon Gibson ain't about to coach (laughs) against either of those guys. You know, uh, I was thinking about that, but, you know, that sucks. But, uh, I mean, Cowboy's still a badass, man. You know, he can still beat a lot of guys. I don't think he's done by any means. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know. Maybe uh, the loser of uh, Curtis Melender versus Max Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, maybe an Elizu, uh, you know. Uh, oh, you want to take it there, huh? <laughs> you know, I mean, shit, uh, you know, what's he up to these days? I mean, this is the UFC, yeah, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The guys, he, guys are going to be trying to make their name off you now, so. Yeah, this is very true. So, obviously, uh, you know, Max Bet season didn't go down this weekend. We originally planned to Max Bet G on Kim, and... I kind of got sketch, uh, sketched out by the line movement, man. I mean, she opened minus 400. She closed minus 165. I had a feeling, uh, you know, because you remember the Tai Yun Bang situation. Not to compare this because it's really not comparable because Tai Yun Bang went from a minus 180 favorite to a plus 325 dog. And this wasn't quite that situation at all. But I had a feeling that if this hit the scorecard, something sketchy was going to happen. And it hit the scorecard and something sketchy did happen because Gian Kim clearly won that fight. Uh, there's no argument for Fabian winning that fight. And one judge still scored it for Fabian. So worst case scenario still won. It would have still been a max bet winner. But uh, I got sketched out by that line movement and uh, one judge fucking scored that shit for Fabian. Yeah, man. Um, Kim definitely won that fight. Shout out to all our clients that got to put some action on that. Um, you know, it sucks that it's unfortunate not all of us could. But, you know, Gian did her job. She was the better fighter. I thought Fabian had, a you know, a little improvements in her game. But it didn't matter. Those first two rounds were, you know, definitely Kim's. And I don't know what it is, man. They just keep trying to fuck up uh, fuck up our, some of our clients' max bets. I mean, it's uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, re- it's really insane. I don't know how you can make an argument for Fabian winning that fight, but at least the rightful winner won. And uh, for those that don't know, you know, because everyone's been saying that, oh, we only bet big favorites, which is not true because, uh, as you know, we have a limit of minus 250 or better. But we had a big underdog winner, plus 170 odds on the end zone, and three-unit play for me, two-unit play for you. And, uh, you know, that was a very impressive performance by Yan Zonen because going into it, I was saying stuff about how, you know, I think she can knock a lot of girls out in that division. But what she showed me in this performance was a super mature fight in in the fact that she can hit and run too because Vivian Pereira is serious. Vivian Vivian Pereira hits super hard for the women's uh, strawweight division. And uh, Vivian Pereira walked her down, but... 
Yan Zonan had her little Holly Holm grunt and run game on, and I was like, yes, yes, Yan Zonan. It was incredible. And if you know how to execute the grunt and run game, then execute it. You know what I'm saying? Um, she execute. I thought she won the first and third. Maybe Ani will be back, even though she's on two L's. She'll be Maybe back she'll for be sure. Back, you know. But uh, Yan Zonan, you know, I think Brazil beats China 99 percent of the time, except Yan Zonan. <laughs> <laughs> and you know. Uh, much love to my girl Yan Zona because this is the second time in a row that we've won over five units on Yan Zona in Asia at five o'clock in the morning. Exactly. First time, you know, 10 unit play against Kylin. I mean, that was the last chance we we're ever going to see Kylin. And, you know, now we had to fade uh, fade Viviani, who was 13 and 1. But we know this type of skills Yan Zonan possesses. And I mean, it's only going to get better from here. Just just make sure you don't put her in a cage with Nadia Kasim because you're going to see a little girl get knocked out. And you're going to see some <laughs> uh, big line movement, too. I'll tell you that right now. And uh, so, you know, my boy Shaq went 1 and 0 on this. Uh, Yan Zonan for 3.4 units on the night. I went one on one and one. I won on Yan Zonan, had three units on her, won 5.1 units on her, and then gave three back on uh, Jessica Rose Clark. Still a plus 2.1 unit night. You we're know, always, we're always winning over here. Yeah, and you know, uh, I know, I know, some people are gonna be like, "Oh, you said I is a fraud." Uh, I is a fraud. There's a seventy percent hit rate when you fade her. Seventy percent is pretty fucking good. And long term, uh, I will win that battle. But one thing I want to say is, you know, shout out to my clients like Vince and Scott, who they do exactly what I say. They follow the money management exactly how I say to do it. You know, it's funny because we're getting spoiled over here, man. The last four events. I've clean, I've clean swept. This was the fifth event that I've won in a row, and I didn't have a clean sweep, but I still had a winning night. I still won 2.1 units, but I'm kind of disappointed I didn't have a clean sweep. That's how spoiled we're getting over here, Shaq. A winning night is not good enough, man. Even though all the guys that bought one-month packages, if they followed our plays exactly to a T with the money management we said, they would have covered that one-month package on that event alone. But you got these guys that are coming out here, and they're like, man, I parlayed your picks. And it's like, guys, don't parlay our picks. We we retired from parlays a long time ago. The way to make this work is to money manage our plays exactly how we say, put exactly what we say on it, you know, because we got a bunch of clients messaging us like, well, we know you guys are the truth, so we max bet Yan Zona. And look, I'm really glad it worked out. This time, it did work out. But if we say if we don't say it's max bet season, then it's not max bet season. Follow our exact money management. Play everything we say to play straight. And do it that way, and you're going to get our results, Shaq. I mean, you know, sometimes it works out for UFC 222. You know, I had a client. I gave him three picks, uh, Stamen, Vieira, and Otto, and he parlayed them all. And I was like, oh, my goodness. You know, sometimes they get away with it, but long term, doing things like that will not work out. Yeah, absolutely. Because let's say you had a 2 and one night, exactly. all straight bets. You still would have had a winning night. <laughs> yeah. But if he would have parlayed those, he would have had a losing night. So, guys... Please don't sit here and parlay our picks. I know I know we have a high hit rate. I know we win a lot. I know, you know, many times it's going to work out, but if you do things the say, if you do things the way we say to do them, you're going to win long term, no questions asked. So please do exactly what we say. If I say 3 units on the end zone, end, that means 3 units on the end zone and straight, nothing more, nothing less, no parlays, no nothing. All our bets are straight bets. So that said, 5 event win streak over here, one ten of the last 12 events. For I'm on a motherfucking 30 unit run. Uh, this is gonna be my best year yet, so I'm very excited. But let's keep recapping this card, man, because uh, obviously we're gonna talk about 226, which is coming up. And I, all I gotta say is, uh, Max Bet season is going down in Las Vegas, International Fight Week. But real quick, this co-main event between Ovin St. Preux and Tyson Pedro. I mean, we've been saying for the longest time Tyson Pedro is a fraud. But I gotta tell you what, that fraud Tyson Pedro went out there. He dropped Ovin. So, uh, and Ovance actually found himself in a guillotine right away after getting dropped. It was almost like a... Allir all over again. It was like deja vu from the Allir Latifi fight. I was like, wow, that really just happened? And then he got out, he got on top, and as soon as he got on top, uh, that was all she wrote, Shaq. Yeah, OSP, uh, you know, we did say he's spotty. You don't know where you're going to get from him, and you don't know what you're going to get from him. You know, he got dropped early, but he came back and pulled off the submission. You know, I think Tyson uh, goes on, and, you know, I think he'll have a decent career you know moving forward i don't think he's that much of a jobber but you know osp proved why he's a top six seven guy and uh he uh made another uh made a, a lot of money again osp makes a lot of money a lot my boy osp is <laughs> a bonus machine <laughs> osp is loaded down there with those 50k bonuses so 
you know, uh, he's probably going to get a lot more. And shout out to my boy Manu Nato, you know, over here in ATL, giving Ovens that striking work, even though Ovens got dropped <laughs> in the fight. Hey, he still, uh, he trained here in Atlanta and he got the first round finish and the bonus. So, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Team Manu and all those guys over there. And uh, as far as Ovens is concerned, man, I mean, look, there, there's a lot of things that we can do with him next. Uh, who's one guy? Jan Blakovich. In the light heavyweight division that he hasn't fought. That's actually a fight that I've been wanting to see for a very long time, so I'm actually glad that you brought well, that up. Well, my boy Cesar, number 15. That's what's up. So, uh, Ovin St. Preux versus uh, Jan Blakovich, is that is that what we want to see next? Yeah, yeah I, I like that matchup. And as far as Tyson Pedro, you know, I know Alvy's been calling out uh, Corey Anderson. I, I want to see Sam Alvy versus Tyson Pedro. It's just an intriguing matchup. Like, you have no idea what the fuck's going to happen there. Um, yeah, but Alvy should fight my boy Lionheart. Oh, you like Lionheart? Yeah. What about Lionheart versus Tyson Pedro? That works, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one right there. So, uh, yeah, definitely some good matchups to be made. Now, uh, now obviously, we got to talk about this Jessica I fight. No, because now people think Jessica I is back. And uh, <laughs> Listen, I'm here to tell you Jessica I ain't back. You know, there's still a 70% hit rate when you fade her every single fight. So now, now she's not one and seven anymore. Now she's two and seven or three and seven. You know, it's like okay, congrats! You got two wins in a row for the first time in your career ever. And uh, props to you. You know, it was one to one going to the third round. She got that takedown. It wasn't controversial at all. Jessica, I legit won that fight. And uh, I'm definitely uh, keeping my eyes peeled to who she fights next. Yeah, you know, it's funny because uh, how you mentioned you you. Uh had a bet on Rose Clark earlier in the week. I had a bet on Giga Chikadze to beat Springer. So, you know, uh, we lost to Austin Springer and Jessica I this week. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's all good, though, because we always get our losses back and more. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I mean, look, it was a case of Rose Clark just, you know, not necessarily being a job or just not being good enough. You know what I'm saying? You know, we knew that her wins over Beck and Paige were good wins, but Paige and Beck suck, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And I might just suck a little less than than them. So I think, uh, just put it this way, best fight picks will have the last laugh with uh, Jessica. Oh, yeah. Make no mistake I mean, about if it. I retire from fading Jessica <laughs> right now, I'm still on top, bro. 70% hit rate. So uh, And even with that, with that, L still came through with a winning event. And same with you, man. So that, that that's, that's what money management's about. That's what discipline's about. That's what selectivity about. And that's what long-term exactly. results are but about, my man. At the end of the day, you know, fading Jessica, I long term always pays off but congratulations to her she's looking she's looking a little better i'm not gonna lie you know she's doing her thing but you know i still see the holes in her game but uh you know i just think it was a case of rose clark being you know just eight and four you know she just she just wasn't that good so you know i think uh this uh plan will we will have the last laugh (laughs) <laughs> uh, and uh, speaking of the last laugh, uh, I have a matchup for Jessica I next. I want to see her in uh, Sajara Eubanks throw down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Let's uh, get Sajara a uh, classic win, you know, a big name, and uh, let Sajara get her title shot. And as far as Jessica Rose Clark is concerned, uh, you know, what about her and Kalindra Faria? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, Peter Yan went out there, and not only did he defeat Teruto Ishihara, he made a statement, man. He went out there and knocked out Teru, first man in MMA history to knock out Taru and he didn't just do it you know he didn't have to struggle right yeah, he, he just he just ran right over him and it was very very impressive yeah I'm serious <laughs> so uh, my boy Peter Yan uh, he's got a bright future at Bantamweight you know you know what the fight I want to see is what him and Nathaniel Wood there we go okay that's what's up I like that fight what do you think about that Peter Yan's no slouch man not too many dudes do that to Drew because I know Teco didn't do it I know uh Ray Maynard, Rolando, I mean, nobody really ran over him like that. They all go to the city. Mizuta. Yeah. So, Peter Yan's no slouch. Uh, he's got that high-level experience outside the UFC before he came in. And, you know, I like that Nathaniel Wood matchup. But, I, you know, I've seen Nathaniel Wood and Cheeto Vera talking shit back and forth. But how about we just rush Peter Yan up? How about Peter Yan versus Douglas De Silva de Andrade in Brazil? Okay. Yeah, fly him down to Brazil and <laughs> let him fight uh, the man with the best doctor in the game. <laughs> I, I, I like that matchup, too. So, Song Yidong beat the living shit out of Felipe Aranches. And, uh, man, m- very, very impressive. You know, he uh, definitely impressed me. I mean, Felipe is a guy that's had over 12 UFC fights. And uh, Andre Feely couldn't finish him. Yuri Alcantara couldn't finish him. All the tough guys he's been in there with couldn't finish him. But uh, my boy Song Yidong, who's about 26 years old, they say he's 19, but, you know, yeah, he's, 26. He, he's, uh, he's 26. He's uh, 26. He didn't just beat Felipe Aranches. He finished him. He absolutely dominated him in every 
sense of the word in every area and every facet of the game. So bright skies for uh, Song Yudong. Who you want to see him in there with next? You know, um, I want to see him in there with a the Mach 1, you know, something like that, because I think the kid, you know, is on that level, to be honest. But, you know, I think it was more of a case. Felipe Aranches has just had enough over the years. But I think uh, Song Yudong's no slouch. How about Song Yudong versus Shane Young, who also won on this I, I thought you wanted to see Song Yudong versus uh, Gabriel. Or Mowgli Benitez. We can do that as well. So, I mean, wherever uh, Song, Song's no slouch, I'll give him his props. But, uh you know, I think uh, he was fighting a wounded warrior. <laughs> as far as Felipe is concerned, look, Felipe, we'd love to have you in the NFC. Make sure you give <laughs> me a call. I'll set you up with a matchup with uh, one of our top featherweights. Gosh, you know, uh, <laughs> I know my boy Nathan Williams could use a big UFC uh, veteran win. So, Felipe Aranches, come fight uh, Nasty Nate Williams here in ATL. <laughs> now, as far as Shane Young and Rolando D is concerned, I got to tell you what. Uh, the workman Shane Young beat the explosive Shane. jobber Rolando D. Shane Young came Shane, to fight. Shane Young shut me up. He, uh, I thought Rolando was going to win that fight, and Shane Young put that pressure on him. He did, uh, Rolando did well to the pressure, so it's. Uh, I guess that workman style is uh, going to win him some fights uh, for now. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll see where Shane Young goes from here. But I was actually really impressed with his volume boxing style. He doesn't stop throwing punches. Uh, and... Props to him on that win, man. Yeah, you know, Damian Beatdown Brown messaged me before the fight. He's like, dude, you don't understand the <laughs> work rate <laughs> that this motherfucker Shane Young is operating on. I was like, yeah, okay. But uh, damn, it turns yeah. out he was right, it man. turns out uh, his work rate is ridiculous. Like, uh, Shane Young, uh, that dude his can fight volume, for three straight yeah, rounds. <laughs> punch volume is serious. So now, I mean, he's got to step up. and well, I mean, I say step up. He just be Rolando D. So what I'm thinking is... You know, this might not be the most exciting, but I know uh, Bruce Leroy and Martin Bravo are about to throw it out next week. Uh, you know, the winner of that could come in here and fight Shane Young, unless you got something uh, something Song, better. Song Yudong. Oh, Song Yudong and Shane Young. <laughs> I, I, know, I know the fans are going to like that matchup better. So, yeah, I like that. Shane Young versus Song Yudong. Let's see, let's see what's up. Now, uh, Keenan Song defeated Hector Aldana, and uh, up until the point that he caught him, my boy Hector Aldana was putting it on Keenan Song. Yeah, I think, you know, Song Kinan uh, should fight my boy Carlo Petrosali Jr. We can do it in Asia or Europe, you know what I'm saying? But Song Kinan, you know, did his job. We knew Hector Aldana would run himself into the ground. He's too inexperienced. He's too green. But, uh, you know, Hector was getting off early. But, you know, I think it was more due to that just Mexican heart, you know, just coming out early, throwing big bombs. So, But uh, Keenan, you know, landed that straight right, which he is known for. But uh, I'm not too sold on him. I want to see him fight Petrosali. Oh, man, Carlo Petrosali versus Keenan Song would be absolutely <laughs> incredible for our bankrolls. And uh, for Hector Aldana, look, he's only like, what, 4-1? and one? I want to see him and Mickey Gall. I think, oh, I think that's go. a good opponent yeah, for Mickey Gall. Yeah, Mickey Gall. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to text Mickey Gall's manager right now and tell him. I like that matchup. It's a good fight. So uh, Jake Matthews took care of Shinsho and Zai. So now Jake Matthews, look, he's on a three-fight win streak at uh, Welterweight. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I can't even sit here and be like, oh, but he's beat Jobbers. He beat Li Jingliang, bro. So, uh do we do we seriously skip my boy Li Jingli out here? We'll we'll get to him in a second. But uh, Jake Matthews, uh, I mean, he went out there and took care of Shinsho. I think it's time to step up, man. I think it's time to see if uh, he really is back at 170 pounds. And uh, Claudio Silva. oh yeah, my boy Claudio Henrique Silva. <laughs> the Silva. Uh, for those that don't know about Claudio Henrique, uh, the dude beat Leon Edwards. He beat Nordin Taleb. He beat Brad Scotch. So. Uh, I like that. Jake Matthews versus uh, Claudio uh, Henrique da Silva. And as far as my boy Shinsho Anzai is concerned, you know, what about him and uh, Daichi Abe? Yeah, my boy Daichi needs an easy one. He just got fucked up two times in a row. <laughs> 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 I don't want to give him three. Who you want for Shinsho next? Um, who cares? Sultan Ali. What about uh, Strickland? Yeah, Strickland. Get my boy Strickland back on track, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, Li Jing Liang beat Daichi Abe, and you know, I like this performance a lot. A lot of people were saying, oh, you should have finished him, this and that. But look, he was trying to prove that I can stand in the pocket for three rounds and not get wobbled, not get rocked. And he was utilizing a lot more head movement. His uh, shoulder rolls were on point and uh, his counters. He even went to the center of the octagon, pulled the Max Holloway, would let him know, hey, motherfucker, let's yeah. stand up and bang. And with Daichi Abe, it was just too much too soon. You don't put a 6-1 six six and guy in there with Li Jing Liang. You know, especially when he was coming off that loss to, to Luke Jumo. Daichi should fight, man, a newcomer, you know, an Asian newcomer. What about or, Daichi Abe versus Mickey Gall? Yeah. yeah there's like a Mickey that. Gall's next two opponents. Yeah, man. Fucking uh, <laughs> Hector Aldani and Daichi Abe. There you go. So, obviously. What about our, Chad LaPree? Chad LaPree versus Daichi Abe? Yeah. You want to do that to Daichi already? You want to get him out the UFC already? I mean, if he catches yeah. Chad. 
Chad, you know, Chad just got knocked the fuck out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so my girl Yan Zonan put on a grunt and run clinic against the very tough Vivian Pereira. Who would you say you want Yan Zonan with next? Um, Alexandra Albu. Um, Are they going to give us a nice line against Nadia Kassam? No, <laughs> not anymore. Maybe uh, we probably were for this, um, but it's unfortunate. But Nadia Kassim's undefeated, so hey, you know, maybe. Yeah. I, they're both undefeated. I want to outboo. Who's, who's number 15 at Strawweight? Number 15 at Strawweight is Angela Hill. Hill. Um, Angela Hill's got a fight with Grasso. What about Joanne Calderwood yeah, Calder, versus uh, Yan Zonan? Um, Kate. Let, let us get Courtney Casey out that top 10. Or I, I, I got one. What about uh, Yan Zonan versus the Karate Hottie? Yeah, like. You like that? Yeah, because we'll butcher her. <laughs> <laughs> as far as Vivian, uh, she's going to rebound very soon. Man, it's too bad Kylan Curran's not in the UFC. How about Vivian versus Courtney Casey? Okay, yeah. give Vivian Courtney Casey. I'm sure Courtney Casey will find a way to flop to her back <laughs> in that one and uh, lose a decision, which she is known for, Shaq. Matt Schnell defeated Naoki in a way. And, man, I really wanted to bet it, but that little soft chin of Schnell kind of <laughs> kept me off. But it turns out I was right. that. Uh, but, look, I was actually wrong to an extent because I thought Naoki was a complete fraud. I'll tell you what, the, he's a little tough guy, man. He went out there, uh, even though he took the L his, and it was his first L, he fought like a man. Yeah, Naoki will be back, you know, but these are the type of things that make fighters better. Props and Schnell, he's getting a little more composed in that octagon. Now he's on a two-fight win streak, and uh, now he's 500 in the UFC, so... My boy <laughs> Schnell's brimming with confidence. My boy Schnell's on a roll right now, so, you know, I want to see Schnell in there with a, uh, yeah, maybe a Ben 10. I know Ben 10's uh, coming back soon, and I know he needs a fight, so we'll really see where uh, Schnell's chin is at, at that point. And we'll see where Ben 10's yeah, at, because we'll he just took a hellacious but, uh, ass whooping. Ben 10's actually been knocked out, like... Six times, yeah, seven six times? times. <laughs> so, so, uh, he's been yeah. knocked out more than Schnell. Yeah, so we'll see... Uh, <laughs> We'll see uh, who's got the better chin. So, yeah, I think a uh, Ben 10 versus match now. I, I like that matchup as well. Something I was thinking was, I know the UFC is in constant contact with Lewis Smolka, and they said, hey, man, win a couple more. We'll bring you back. Well, now he's won a couple more since he's been out. If they want to give Lewis Smolka a return to the UFC and put him in there with match now, I'd be very interested in that matchup. Or you could put him in there with uh, the next couple guys because we had Olka Sasaki taking on Janelle Lauza. And Olka Sasaki sprinted across that cage, immediately took down Janelle Lauza. And it looked like he was going to submit him right away, but he didn't. And when Lauza got up, Lauza was landing some bombs on Olka Sasaki. But finally, Olka ultimately got the back, finished him via rear naked choke, which you called to a T, by the way. It's funny. You called the last one to a T, too. You said Matt Schnell via split on Asian turf. You (laughs) said Olka via rear naked choke. And uh, it came to fruition. So now Olka Sasaki's got another win. And, uh, man, uh, it's time to step up once again. So... I'm thinking, let's rebook yeah, Magomed Bibulatov versus Olka Sasaki. Boom. Make that little Chechnya uh, fight. He, <laughs> he keeps running. And as far as Janelle Lauza, you know, it might be time to come to the NFC and uh, <laughs> fight my boy Devante Sewell, fight my boy Jacob Hybison, you know what I'm saying, fight my boy John Sweeney. <laughs> and uh, Much respect to Lauza. He swings hard, but uh, he's got a lot of holes uh, in his in his ground <laughs> game. <laughs> it's terrible. You know, smoking yeah. too many cigarettes in the Philippines <laughs> over there, you know what I'm saying, bro? But, uh, and then, obviously, we spoke about Gian Kim. She defeated Melinda Fabian. I thought it was a pretty clear decision. But, you know, there was something sketchy with the line movement. There was something sketchy with the scorecards. But the rightful winner got the job done. Now we got to pick her next fight. And, uh, she listen, she's been in there with, with Pudalova. She's been in there with Justin Keish. Now she just beat Melinda Fabian. What are you thinking uh, we give uh, – Gian Kim next because a lot of people don't know she was actually supposed to fight Holly Holm so you know they think they think yeah. of her in very high regard. Um, I could see her fighting you know Jillian Robertson or you know Andre Lee. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Gian Kim versus Andre. Yeah, Lee. get the little Nazi out the <laughs> UFC real quick. I, I like that. So uh, yeah, Gian Kim versus uh, Andrea the Fraud Lee. <laughs> Uh, Andrea S.S. Lee. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot, man. Um, so, uh, yeah, USC Singapore was a great card. You know, I was able to stay awake for most of it. You know, I, I woke up uh, halfway through the Schnell fight, got to see my girl Yan Zonan catch the three-unit play at plus 170 odds, and uh, another winning event for us. And listen, Shaq, we won 10 of the last 12 events uh, on a 30-unit run right now, and it's going to continue Next week at the tough finale at UFC 226, and uh, last night we had a long film session. And all I gotta say is, uh, it's easy money on the board, and then uh, <laughs> Vegas for international fight week is going down. Max bet season, big weekend. When I say it's Max bet season, you guys know what that means. 
I advise everyone to sign up, hit that email, bestfightpicks at gmail.com. I want to change lives for International Fight Week and uh, make a lot of people money. So let's uh, let's get it. Yeah, let's let, let's make your bankroll great again. I mean, if you're a small better, you know, my boy Vince, you know, he took a $200 bankroll and turned it into a 2 k bankroll in a span of two months. And then you got my whales that, you know, are oh, betting nice. 5K on all our bets. <laughs> and uh, now they're sending us 60-inch TVs. I mean, I'm getting Props to my boy. Thank you. When you're getting messages... When you tell people to put two units on the end zone and, and they're telling you, but bro, I trust you, I'm going to max bet it, you know, that's the type of confidence my guys have in me, even though I tell them not to do things. Like <laughs> even though I have to be like, hey man, it's a three unit play, not a max bet. <laughs> like, do what we say, please. And they, they trust us so much that they parlay our picks and it's like, guys, don't do that. Play them straight, exactly how we say, the amount we say, and you'll be squared away. Don't get me wrong, from time to time you will hit that parlay, but we are not parlay guys. Parlays are are a bookmaker's dream. Parlays are sucker bets, so please don't do that. Please play our bet straight, exactly how we say, with the money management that we say to do, with the discipline that we have, and you're going to win long term, and that's the bottom line. So go to bestfightpicks.com and sign up today because International Fight Week, it's going to be serious, and it doesn't stop there, Shaq, because Boise, oh, as we keep saying, that's the biggest. That's going to be the biggest night in Best Fight Picks history, my man. Boise might be max best season times three, so just just be uh, keep your eyes open for that. Absolutely, <laughs> and uh, you know we'll have another podcast out later this week. I want to thank you guys so much for the support. Sign up, subscribe to Half the Battle on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Sign up to Best Fight Picks on bestfightpicks.com, maxbetseason.com. Follow me at Best Fight Picks. Follow Shaq at MMA Genius 05. Got a, got a lot of exciting things in the works. And uh, hit us up anytime, man. We love you guys. So until the next time, let's cash these bets.